Um, so hello everyone. Um, many of you know me already. I'm Dr. Plotka or Raquel Plotka. Some of you are in classes with me. A lot of you are in high school and you came to visit my class or I came to visit your class. Um, so we know each other, but you don't know Natasha Coles yet, who is our visitor today. Um, so I'm going to introduce her. Natasha used to be a student in our early childhood program here at Peace University. She used to come to classes. She used to talk a lot about her baby who, when she came to class, was two. So he must be, what, seven now? Yeah, he just turned eight. Eight, hey, okay. Mm -hmm. and, your, and your little one? Yeah, she's going to be five. She'll be five next month. Exactly. I, had her, I had her while I was in the program, right? Right. And so Natasha used to come and, you know, we're talking about early childhood. So she always gave tons of examples from her kids, from her, her son. And then she was expecting during the program. So she did the program while growing her family and graduated. And now she's a pre-K teacher in Queens. And she decided to write this amazing book um, for young children, which I, I have, I own, and I read before, and I heard, and you guys are going to listen to it, reading it soon, um, and which is, it's a great book, um, and she also visited a lot of preschools, right, um, many preschools aff affiliated or with students who graduated from Pace University who invited her, so part of the Pace University network. So she visited a lot of preschools where she read her books to other children and other teachers as well. Um, and she, in addition to being a teacher and a book writer, is a great reader, so it's fun to listen to her read. Um, and I'm going to stop talking about Natasha and let her take over. Hi, Natasha. Hello, 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 friends. I'm like friends because I'm always used to my, my children. I'm like, hello, friends, how are you? <laughs> Thank you so much for, for the invitation. It's really a pleasure to be here. I'm excited. All right, so we, we get right into the story. Yes. Please. All right, let's get right into the story. I'm like, thumbs up, thumbs up. All right, here we go. <laughs> yes, let's go. All right, let's get into the story. All right, just give me a second to share my screen. So Natasha is gonna read us her story and then she has a little surprise for us after the story. And then after the story, we'll have some time for some questions for Natasha. So if you have any questions that pop into your head while she's reading or after she's reading, you can put them in the chat. All right, awesome. So, before I ever walked, everybody can see my screen, right? All right. Before yes. I ever walked by Natasha Coles, that is me, illustrated by I. Sinazel. To my children, Paul, Asa, and Aria Joy, may you always believe and may you always conquer. To my husband, Paul, my mommy and my daddy, sister Kim, and my extended family, you guys are my backbone. And loving memory of Anthony Hunter Jr., little Tony, your sweet and encouraging spirit will forever inspire. The fire of a walk. On the edge of a grand forest, just beneath the big open sky, sat a bird with hues of blues and grays. Every day that bird would say, my name is Birdie Blue and I'm stuck in this tree. Can someone help me please, please, please? A raccoon named Rocco Roo heard the faint chirps far beyond the leaves. How can I help you today, Birdie Blue? Teach me to fly, Rocco Roo. I'm stuck in this tree, as you can see. Teach you to fly? Well, that's just silly. Rocco laughed. <laughs> then he wished Birdie good luck and waddle, waddle, waddled down the woody trail. Birdie took a deep breath and said as loud as his little bird voice would allow, My name is Birdie Blue and I'm stuck in this tree. Can someone help me, please, please, please? Scurrying along was a fuzzy, wuzzy rabbit named Rabbit Lou. Howdy do, Birdie Blue. How can I help you? Please teach me to fly. I'm stuck in this tree and I would love someday to finally fly free. 
Rabbit raised his flappy ears and widened his eyes. Teach you to fly, he said. Why, that's absurd. I hop and I jump and I'm not a bird. Rabbit Lou wished Bernie Blue good luck and then hop, hop, hop down the woody trail. While walking through the forest, a little boy heard a sniff, sniffle, sniffle, chirp, chirp. He looked up and saw a beautiful blue bird sitting in its home all alone. Hey, little birdie, why are you crying? My name is Birdie Blue and I'm stuck in this tree. Every day I call out for someone to help me. Well, how can I help, asked the little boy. Can you teach me to fly, asked Birdie. It give me great joy. Hmm, said the little boy. Hey, I have an idea. It seems like you're stuck, but I can get you out of here. When I'm stuck, my mom always says, before I ever walked, I had to crawl. I had to try. I had to fall. I had to cry. But each time I got up, each time again, I tried. So just try, little birdie. I know you can fly. So birdie looked to the right and he looked to the left. He peered up and he peered down. And then he jumped out of his nest and he fell to the ground. There was a thud, a tumble, then a plop as the little birdie bounced, bounced, bounced and bumped into a rock. Ouch! The little birdie exclaimed. Birdie was sad and mad all at once. I gave it my all, I gave it my best. Flying is not for me. He folded his wings over his chest and said, please put me back in my nest. So the little boy dusted Birdie off, placed him in his pocket, and climbed, climbed, climbed up the tree. Flying is for the other birds. They must be special, Birdie said. Not true, not true, said the little boy. You are special too. He took out his little looking glass and said, take a look at you. He held the looking glass close to his beak. Take a peek, Birdie, take a peek. As he looked closely, Birdie saw himself in the air. He was amazed. His wings were flap, flap, flapping without a care. Birdie Blue looked away and with his feathers, he wiped his eyes. He shook his head and he smiled, a smile a mile wide. Whoa, can this really be me, he asked. Yes, it can, Birdie, you just have to believe. The little boy began to chant. Before I ever walked, I had to crawl. I had to try, I had to fall, I had to cry. But each time I got up, each time again I tried. So come on, Birdie, I know you can fly. Fly, fly, fly. Then Birdie began to sing. Before I can fly, I must flap my wings. I must try, even if I cry, I can do this thing. Oh me, oh my, I believe I can fly. Birdie started flapping and believing and believing and flapping and suddenly he took flight. Hey, little boy, looks like you were right. With the wind beneath his wings, Birdie soared and spun and whirled and twirled. Birdie Blue was swooshing and whooshing and zipping and zooshing. All the animals from the forest pointed up in disbelief and asked, is that Birdie Blue who cried and cried because he couldn't fly? Yes, yes, yes it is, the little boy replied. Before I could ever walk, I had to crawl. It was the trying and the falling that made me strong. You're getting strong now, Birdie. So don't stop trying and don't stop believing. Just keep flying. Traveling down the woody trail, they began to cheer. One step, two steps, three steps, four. One flap, two flap, three flap, soar. One step, two steps, three steps, four. One flap. Two flaps, three flaps, soar. The end. Thank you so much. That's a fantastic book, but also a fantastic reading, <laughs> right? Um, and Natasha, you want to show us the surprise? Sure. Well, okay. So it's it's a it's a two it's a two for one a two for. Okay. So we're gonna show the we're gonna show the cartoon. It's a little cartoon. So I wrote this song 
Um, and it was inspired by the book, obviously. And my niece is actually singing the song for me. So um, we're going to show the cartoon. And then after that, we're going to get up and we're going to do a little movement because early childhood is all about the senses, multi-sensory engagement, right? So yep. go. here we go. I'm going to show the video now. So we'll take a look there. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And what are we going to do now? All right. So now we can do, if everybody wants to, we can all get up and mm -hmm. we, can, we can do the movements. We're going to do a little exercise dance. Hey, everybody get up. I want to see everybody getting up. So, movement. Here we go. One step, two step, three step, one step, two step, three step, and now we're clapping. One clap. Two flaps, three flaps, or one flap, two flaps, three flaps, or we go again. one step, two step, step, step three step. everyone, I want to see you doing it. One step, two step, three step, four. one flap, two flaps, three flaps, or one flap, two flaps, three flaps, or one flap, two flaps, three flaps, or one Fly 
movement into a reading of a book it was great thank you <laughs> and i think that this is so appropriate for an early childhood classroom right right <laughs> like we do the reading we do the literacy but we also do the movement that is great and the music fantastic thank and you. natasha i know a lot of people have a lot of questions for you okay yeah? Ooh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> right, I know. I'm trying to catch my breath. Let's <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> take one deep breath. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. So, okay. A lot of people have questions for you. I'm going to start with some of the questions that I think everybody might be thinking about. And then hopefully if we have some time, lean <sighs> on with more questions, right? Okay. Uh, and my question that I always have is, what inspired you to become an author? Okay, well, it's actually something that I hadn't really thought about, to be honest, after I had my son, as you mentioned, um, you know, just reading books to him and just looking at all the stories. And like I said, I do, I've always loved, I love to write songs. That's something that I've always done, even from just being an, a child, as a, as a kid, my mom has tapes of me, like making songs. So that's something that no. I always to do, but I never really... Um, you know, thought about it like, oh, becoming an author. But it was after after my son and reading stories to him, I was like, hey, I might be able to do this. And so it was it was that was kind of what inspired. But it wasn't like a primary focus of mine. It's like, hey, this would be nice to do someday. So great. And I think a lot of teachers have books inside them, right? When they're teaching young children, there's always oh, if there's always a little book about this. Um, so it's great to see that you did it and that it's doable. Um, yes. What made you write this particular book and this story? Like what inspired you to tell this story about a bird who couldn't fly and the, you know, the little help he got? Right, you know, um, I feel like my, my story is a little different just because it, I, I didn't sit down and think about this story and like, oh, how's it gonna, you know, what am I gonna write about? Which is a part of the book writing process, you know, just brainstorming about, you know, your titles and the theme and things like that. Um, really this story, the life of this story was birthed out of death, you know? And um, as you can see, when I started reading the story, I told the, the book is in memory of my cousin, um, Anthony Hunter Jr. And so um, he passed away at a, at a young age. It was very unexpected. And so, um, you know, one of the things at his funeral, at his homegoing service that people spoke about was that he was just always giving and always caring and always thoughtful, you know? And so we drove to South Carolina and on the way back home, um, all of a sudden, you know, I guess those things were in my spirit, I guess they were just in my heart. And um, as I was there, we were riding, we had nothing to do. Some the idea came in my head about a bird and being in a forest. And so I'm like, okay. So I actually, you know, told my sister and my cousin about it. And they're like, okay, yeah, I mean, that could be something. And so literally by the time it was like about 10 hours left in the drive, by the time we got to New York, I pretty much had the, the story that is here before you, like I pretty much had the, the whole story. So I really feel like it was inspired. It was just given to me by God or, you know, it was, but it was influenced by the life of my cousin, you know, and that was the initial, that was the initial reason for it, you know, and I thought like, oh, this would be a great way to kind of just let his memory live on. So 
That's that's beautiful and really, really touching. Um, and I think that it talks to everyone. It talks to young children, but it talks to everyone because we all have our fears, right? Yeah. Uh, and we all have to conquer them and we all have to take big steps and jump. Like, just, you know, you know graduating know. high school could be a big step or, 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 you know, starting college or being in a graduate school program, right? Those are all big jumps that we all have to take. And right. one of the things about the book is that you, we all also need help, right? We don't do it all on our own. There's right. always somebody out there. What were you going to say, Natasha? Um, yeah, I was going to say too, and, and I think that's the funny thing because it really started that way. Um, and as I continued to read it and as I continued to just, you know, like really think about it, I said, you know what? That bird was me. Like I, like growing up, I was so shy. I like literally, like I had so much fear. Like I wouldn't raise my hand in class. Like, I mean, they're like really like extreme to the point where like, I always wanted to dance and sing and do those things. And I would literally watch people do everything they ever wanted to do. And I would be crying because I, I, I just couldn't bring myself to it. And so as I, as I read the book, I realized, wow, like that, that, that was me, you know? But um, as, I, as I got older and it's really more into like my thirties, the end of my 20s, 30s, that I just started to make a commitment to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try to overcome this, you know, and I had to try it, you know, and sometimes it wasn't a success and, you know, sometimes it was, but, you know, really I found that that, that bird was me. So well, look amazing. at you now, right? <laughs> now you're not shy and you ask tons of questions in class, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And I think we're all little birds inside and we all have to learn how to fly in different environments at different times so it's great let me ask you another question here um so i as i said we all usually as preschool teachers early childhood educators or future educators um think that we have this great idea for a for a book right um especially once we're in the field and we see what's out there and what's missing we all have ideas for a book but how does a book go from like being an idea to actually getting published like so so many of us want to do that, but don't know where to start. So can you talk a little bit about that process? I'm sure. Well, um, I went through um, Mascot Books, which is a, a publishing house, but they're kind of like a hybrid publishing house. So they allow you to um, keep the rights of your, your books and, and all the um, and all that and like if you sell it you keep like 80 percent of of what you sell it for and things like that so um i went through them um i i started the process by submitting my book idea i know sometimes if you've ever if you've ever thought about it or you might have looked it up you'll see like some publishing houses will say you know submit your idea most of the book you know a lot of the 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 more well-known books are you know um with some other publishing houses and they might not take any soliciting or anything like that but there are some smaller ones that will take your your book idea um you know but also be very careful it took me a long time to just even release it but i did a lot of research and i found um that actually i ended up knowing somebody who used this publishing house as well um so from there i submitted my idea they thought that it was um a good idea they thought it was relatable um and i mean one of the things they said was profitable although i wasn't thinking about that at the time but they said that that it's a you know they think it's a profitable idea and so they were willing to get started so from there um, I began to work with um, a, a script writer and they read over my things and so we went back and forth for a couple of months just seeing how we can reword it what we could add what needed to what what maybe been might have been missing from the story I'm um, just trying to make it cohesive so we spent a couple of months doing that um, then we did the the layout and the fonts and all of that um, then I was able to get an illustrator um, I found the I don't know if you want me to answer this but I think it was part of the question too but um the illustrator yeah, a lot of people are asking that how do you meet up how did you connect with an illustrator so yeah, yeah so please talk about I was that. fortunate I was fortunate in that this publishing house um, like I said, they give you full rights um, to to your to your piece. So if I had my own outside illustrator, that would have been welcomed. But they had a, a, a an overwhelming catalog of illustrators, and so you look through the catalog, um, which I said, like I said, was a lot. It was very daunting at first, um, and then you narrow it down to three. And so after that, you give them your they they get a snippet of your of your book. And then they have to come up and create the, the the main character. And so from there, you go you go from there, just hoping that they're going to be able to fully um, understand and kind of express, you know, the vision that you have for the book. So um, I actually found Isenizal through 
through mascot books and she's she's really amazing it, like if you look at it, like a lot of her work it just was child friendly it just spoke to me and she was really able to just thoroughly like more than more than what I was expecting you know um, to to kind of communicate the, the the heart behind the book so um, but if you do, if you decide not to go through you know a, a publishing house there are many people who are self-publishing um, and I think that there's a, um, a site called like Ingram Sparks um, and it's like maybe fifty dollars or whatever for you to like get started on on your book and now there's a there's a couple of websites but Fiverr is a website where you can outsource um, a lot of a lot of your work so book layouts and you know car the cartoon that that I had was from someone Fiverr they think they were in blank Bangladesh so you know you can kind of you know there are a lot of resources available for people who want to do it on their own even Amazon has um, self-publishing options as well so um, and master classes are available um, if you if you're interested I have a I have a link for um, a master class where you can basically publish the book yourself. Yeah, I mean, any links will be welcome. That will be sure. great. Sure. Um, yeah, well, thank you so much. And if anybody has any follow-up questions about that, about the process of writing a book or meeting up with an illustrator, please um, type them in the chat and I'm sure Natasha will love to answer. Um, another yeah. question I have for you, Natasha, is, um, you know, a big, big part of early childhood education and childhood um, <laughs> is reading books, right? And a big part of parenting also. Um, and so reading books, is such a big part of fostering language skills and literacy and teachers do that all the time. And I know you're a teacher, but you're also amazing at reading books, right? To children. So what are, and, and it's a huge skill and some, and a skill that a lot of times in my classes I try to teach about, um, but what are some tips or, you know, what can you tell us about how to read books to young children? What are some suggestions and things that have worked for you? Um, well, I, I love being animated. I think, you know, the kids enjoy reading when things come alive when it makes sense when they can connect you know and so just giving for like giving your energy you know i think you know sometimes it's like you kind of got to put on your theatrical hat you know um so that's one of one of the the tips i would give also um like you see i, I really love a lot of movement so kinesthetic um kind of make like merging kinesthetic movements and things like that with the book are important to me so even when i'm reading um to to children I, I stop a lot for the vocabulary and I'll maybe make up a, a word that has a movement to it. Like if the word is embrace, I'm like, oh, everybody let's embrace. And every time we see that word, like let's embrace to help them, you know, make the connection and also, you know, understand the meaning of it. Um, you know, if, if the, I think I read, what was the, the other day, Jabari jumps. And so he's climbing up, he's climbing up the, the, the diving board. And so friends, he's climbing, like let's, let's climb. So, you know, it's really just inviting them to into an experience and showing them that reading can be fun also just asking those questions um you know have you ever you know been fearful have you ever you know whatever depending on what the book is and so that way they can make those text to self connections when children can see themselves inside of a book when they can see themselves um, it makes more sense they're able to comprehend and relate more so um that's definitely um a big one and you know just stopping along the way for for comprehension i have like a lot of students that are english language learners so if I'm reading a book straight through like more than likely they don't know what's going on and so just in, just making sure that everyone you know has access and everyone can understand and relate to to it to the to the book somehow you know even if you have like Spanish speakers and you know that the, the Spanish word for it or whatever it is then you can you know incorporate that too just to kind of you know help pull them in so they don't feel you know excluded so those are just some of the the tips that I make it yeah, those are great, great tips, right? Um, and I, I always tell um, my students that sometimes a child needs this one word, right, that they know. And if they know the meaning of that word, they'll get the whole book. But that one word that they don't understand can block them from that experience, right? right. The experience of being part of the reading. So, yeah. Um, and how did you come up with that dance and, and the song? Yeah, you know... Like I said, I always really loved, I love to, to write, to write songs and sometimes things will come to me. Um, for this one, like I said, um, I didn't have the song at first. Um, what I was doing with the book was 
like the for after after I read the book and when I was going to schools, I would do like an engagement. So I'll like think about like the action words. Some of the action words were waddle. So I'll say, can you waddle, waddle, waddle? Like your name is really Rocco. And so like then we're all waddle. So it was really, it started out as like an action words kind of um, thing. And then, you know, I said like, I really want to do it. I want a song for it, you know? So um, I thought about the one step, two step at the end. And then I said, you know what? It could be a little, it could be a little dance. So that's really just how, and I, I, I love to dance. I love to sing. So it was really just incorporating pieces of me into, into the experience. Great. And, you know, there are a lot of books out there for young children. Um, so in your experience as a teacher and also as an author, what kind of books are missing from the early childhood, you know, collections out there? What, what do we still need? You know, I think that we're always going to need books because the world is, is evolving and changing, you know, like who would have thought before we needed a book about wearing a mask, you know, or remote teaching and how the child, you know, the child, you know, experiences that, you know, so I think that as long as the world turns, they're always gonna, you know, be, there's always going to be something to talk about. But I think that the biggest thing that I can say is that whatever book that you haven't written is the book that's missing, because nobody can tell a story like you, nobody can communicate it like you. And that was one of the things that I, that, you know, I could have allowed to stop me because who hasn't heard a story about a bird? who hasn't heard a story about you know persevering but at the end of the day like nobody can tell it like I can tell it you know and so I think it's just being able to have the confidence in yourself but as far as you know um you know to directly answer the question you know the diversity is a big issue you know we want to be able we want children to be able to see themselves in in stories you know it makes it, it gives life more meaning and especially you know when we see you know a lot of the books now um i think they say like it's like books are like a mirror to children so what they see is what they think they they can do you know but if the mirror is broken like their perception is off and so if you're only seeing one race you know in a story then you know it's it, it's it's a fracture there it's something missing and so just closing the gap of diversity and just even people telling their own stories i've even read some stories that were about African Americans, let's say, or another culture, but it was written by somebody else. So I think it's important for, you know, diverse writers to tell their diverse stories as well. So yeah, that's, that's really, really important and amazing. And I think we need books um, that are diverse in, in different ways, right? It could be yeah. culturally or racially, but it could be also different family structures, right? And, and, uh -huh. and Right, like that we, we keep seeing a lot of mom and dad uh, when really that doesn't always mirror what children see at home, uh, right. what their family looks like, right? Right. Yeah, so another question I have is, can you tell us a little bit about your experiences at Pace University and how did that shape you as a teacher and as an author? Uh, what do you still have inside you that you took from Pace? Yeah, I think that my experience, it was, it was amazing. Um, when I first started, I was older. So that was a, like, I was a little nervous about that because I didn't come straight from um, college. I was actually a career changer and I was a caseworker before and I worked in mental health. So I switched over. So I definitely had some reservations. I wasn't feeling confident in my ability to be able to, you know, do this, but I did have a tug to kind of go this, to go this route. And so um, when I first got there, I was, you know, it was evening classes. Like I said, I was already a mother. So um, I was overwhelmed a little bit, but I think that um, all of my professors made it um, a very good experience. I think that, you know, one of the first classes I remember that like, I really loved so much. It was, and it was actually Dr. Plotka's class and not cause you're here, I'm saying that. But, um, you know, we had to do one about um, how the brain makes connections and we all had to stand up and we had to do like the the string and you know we did an exercise about that and then um there's another one we were talking about children and you know when i think it was in development class and how they you know how they communicate and so how they can get frustrated when they can't be understood and so we all had to like have this activity where we couldn't communicate with our words and we had to just like i don't know if we had to write it down like it was something but we had to understand what we were saying without words and so it was just really those things left impressions on me because they they made it they made you understand that 
learning is about doing, you know, it's about experiencing. And that's exactly what early childhood is. It's not just sitting there listening to lectures, but it's actually getting in there and like, you know, being, putting your, putting yourself in the, the, the shoes of the children that you're going to be teaching and, you know, being able to understand that. And so um, it was a very well-rounded experience from Dr. Brock to Dr. G with our math. And, um, you know, like I said, everything was just really hands-on. So it wasn't just sitting there the whole time, but it was really, it was engaging. And um, I used a lot of that as I, as I wrote and even as I teach now, teaching is multi-sensory. And that was what we had to get when we left. You need to know that teaching is multi-sensory. It's about engaging all of, you, all of the children's senses um, and not leaving anybody out, making sure that everybody has a way to understand. Um, and just even with like writing the book, um, just understanding the importance of rhyming. So there's a lot of rhyming in my book. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, like I said, the movement and things like that. So there are things that I took um, from my understanding of early childhood and how children develop and how they learn. And I incorporated that, um, some of those aspects into, into the book as well. So um, it's definitely um, been a fulfilling um, experience. But when I first, when I first got, the, and th this was, this was such a good one. I don't remember whose class it was in. It could have been Dr. Brock, but we had to use Play-Doh to tell about our emotions and how we were feeling about the, about, about class and just the, the journey, embarking on this journey. I'm um, in early childhood. And I think like I made a scary face, you know, out of my Play-Doh, but it's just because I was thinking like, what did I get myself into at first? But it was so well, it was so well worth the journey. Um, it was so well, worth trying and um yeah and and at the end it was it was it was it was an amazing experience teachers were you know very flexible and understanding especially like i said i i was carrying my second child and so you know some of my classes everybody's in class i was logging in remote you know to do my presentations and things like that so um you know everybody was really caring and you know they they were not just talking about it but they were about it and i think that's what made my journey so successful well, thank you so much for sharing all that. And I know some people have typed some questions on the chat. So Lynn, I'm going to let you read out some questions for Natasha. Sure, absolutely. Uh, first of all, there's lots of information about everyone being so inspired by your enthusiasm, Natasha. So, I mean, I, just for all getting up and dancing, we're feeling your energy. I think we all want to go out and feel the point. So thank you so much for that. Uh, some questions about the music. How did you come to the music and uh, how did that come to you? Okay, well, um, we, my husband actually makes music. And so initially we started, I wanted like a Caribbean theme. So we kind of started there. Um, and then um, we were like, oh, I need this like really quickly and just like product in terms of production and things like that. So um, there are sites where you can, you know, search for music and things like that. So this was a song that I actually searched through a, a ton of samples and I found this this sample. So that's how it came about. But oh, I already great, like, well, I wanted a Caribbean kind of theme. Well, we all certainly enjoyed it. Here's another one. What was one of the most surprising things you learned in creating your book? Hmm, that's a really good question. The surprising thing that I learned. Um, I think, I think that this is really tricky. One of the, the things that I learned, um, just about process and just about patience, I think, you know, um, you know, when you're starting something, it's really, you don't know, it, like it really, it took a year for this, for this book to come out. And so just the process and, you know, like sticking to, sticking to something and, and, you know, just following through. I will say too, as well with pace, like that was something that I started and I finished. And that was something, I was a great starter. I was somebody who started tons of things. I, I tried other programs and things like that. And so um, just being able to start and finish something and be proud of it because we can all start things, but it's seeing it through to the end. So I think I learned um, just just um, my ability to be able to see something to the end and, and see the great outcome of it. Sure, absolutely. Here's another, um, some questions about the video. How did you, you identified the music and the illustrations. How did you start the process of creating the actual video, the music video? Okay, well, that was something that I did through Fiverr. 
Um, I, I found, again, it's just about looking to see what, what you want. And I went through Fiverr and there is, um, you put in graphic and illustrators, music videos, um, things like that. So um, I found this, this guy who was in Bangladesh and um, I sent him over um, the, the book and the idea and I asked him would he be able to make a, a music video out of it. And so we started working. He sent me the character. Initially, it was like a little crazy. And I was like, oh, is, is this a bad idea? But um, we were able to, to work back and forth to get it to a place that it was, you know, pretty decent. But in my mind, I had like, oh, I want this. I wanted it to be like really grand. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's more simplified than I would have liked. I definitely had like a trolls, you know, thing in my mind, but it was like, oh, that'll be $5,000. I was like, okay, no. So, um, so I had to scale it down a little bit, but, you know, we still were able to, to get to the point get the vision across and so um that's what that process was like and like like i said again the music was a, something that i found through um a sample music site okay well first of all um everyone says that your niece has such a beautiful voice too so everyone enjoyed her voice here's another question yes she did a wonderful job what are some of your favorite children's books some of my favorite that you enjoy Right. Well, of course, you know, we, we have with to, yours. with Dr. Seuss, just because I love, I love rhyming. So that, that's that. But um, there's a book by BJ Novak that I really love the, the book with um, no pictures. And I love that just because it's like really emphasizing words and just being able to draw children in without, without any pictures. And I think that's really amazing. So that's a fun book I love, but um, I love Mo Willems. Um, his his books are amazing. I love how he has like a little, you know, sarcastic take on things, but it's also kind of like unexpected, but it also leaves children to kind of make their own ending and um, try to, you know, just a lot of critical thinking in there. You know, what do you think is happening? How would you, you know, what do you think is going to happen at the end and that things like that. Um, Dave Wammond um, is, is another one that I love. And um, let's see, Robert, Robert Munch, I love as well. So. Natasha, I know like in the oh, past you come to Pace and people have actually got the book, right? Because I see a lot of um, a lot of the people are saying, oh, I can't wait to read this book to my students. Um, so hopefully soon in the future, you can come to Pace again with your books so people can get them. But right now, where could people get your book if they wanted to read them to their class? I'm sure. Okay, so I'm going to drop the, the link in the chat, but you can go to ncolesbooks.com and you can get them there. Um, that'll be directly from me. So if it's coming from directly from me, you can put, I'll give a little autograph in it. Um, you can also purchase them on Amazon. There's five left on Amazon. Um, so, but um, yeah, but the ones from N, uh, ncolesbooks.com is coming directly from me. So um, I can put that in the chat. Thank you. And Lena, are there any more questions? No, just one more comment I think might be a nice way to, to um, you know, sort of end it. One comment is thank you for the inspiration. Also, that you were once in our shoes and succeeded, very motivational. Good luck. I, <laughs> um, oh, hi, it's Joan Weaver. Yes. I, uh, oh, hey, Joan. I'm sorry. Uh, what a great presentation. I can't thank you enough. You were so inspirational. And um, I was actually kind of wondering a little bit about your theater background, uh, if you have any. And your niece is certainly very, very talented. But I want to just thank you for uh, sharing your inspiration. You've taken something that might seem um, impossible for our students to do and you broke it down into some nice uh, feasible steps that make something very complex, uh, something that one of our students might want to try and, um, and succeed at. And so thank you so much for breaking all of that down for us. I can't thank you enough. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Well, to answer your question, I don't have a, a background in theater. I actually took theater in college and I couldn't get on the stage. I was too scared. So, but now, <laughs> <laughs> so now, now I'm doing, I'm doing it all, right? But, um, and thank you. My niece, my niece sings, my son sings, my daughter sings, my husband is a musician. So it's just, we are just kind of 
you know, doing what we can. But I'm so happy. I'm so happy that um, everyone was inspired. That is really my heart, just to encourage and inspire people. And um, yeah, so I'm and, just and so I, related. Let me just add one more thing. I was able to go on your website and you sent me the book and it was uh, unexpectedly, I had a very nice um, autographed copy of your book. So thank you very much for that. Yes, thank you. I recognize the name. I'm like, Joan Weaver. I recognize that name. So thank you. Thank you. I was like, how did she even find, find my, um, to, because most, most things come through Amazon, but you know, um, it's very rare that I get one that's coming directly to, to my website. So um, thank you so much for that, for um, supporting that. And um, yeah, yeah, you can always, and like I said, ncolesbooks.com. You can follow me if you're on Instagram at author ncoles. I'm on Instagram and yeah. Thank you so much. I, on behalf of Richard R. Green High School of Teaching, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, the enlightenment that you shared with our students today. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Natasha. Thanks for visiting and for the amazing reading and the movement and the book. I think we should all unmute um, ourselves now and give Natasha a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, so everyone. Much. We'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank Have you. a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.